Okay, so uh, let's break down the second biome, the uh, the fiery one. So if you enter the geometry container, uh, you can see we start with the same basic uh, height field, same size, uh, thousand units, same spacing. But this time we're not going to use any like manual method uh, to start. We're going to use uh, noises to uh, to begin with. So my idea uh, with this height field to create some kind of terrain with. Uh, which looks like um, uh, hills with uh, rivers of lava uh, uh, surrounding and kind of cutting, flowing uh, through it. So my first, uh, I want to create those hills. Uh, so how I did that, I, uh, for the, those base shapes, I used three height fill noises. Uh, the first noise, as you can see, uh, it has like amplitude of 500, element size of 321. It's a pearly noise uh, with almost the, the default settings, um, uh, 8 octaves and 0 0.5 roughness. Uh, but what's specific for this noise is that I, I folded it in, so you get these kind of a hill shapes with uh, rivers running um, uh, through it. I also set uh, the gain a little bit uh, to 0 0.345, and I also set the, uh, the bias uh, up to uh, 0.89 to kind of um, get the shapes that I uh, that I like. Uh, okay, but everything was like was very pillowy and fluffy, so it was time to kind of remove some of these uh, of this uh, fluffiness. Uh, so uh, the second noise uh, was actually set to uh, minimum. Uh, Pretty similar setup for the noise. Again, it's it's a bit lower amplitude. It's uh, it's like uh, half the amplitude, but a little bit less in the element size. Again, we're using a purling with a little bit lower uh, roughness. Uh, again, I also folded it and complemented it uh, this time, uh, and use gain and bias to kind of set where the uh, where that kind of minimum is going to blend in. As you can see, you can kind of use the gain to move it. Uh, up and down and use the bias if you want like less and more of that noise to uh, to kick in. So the gain of 0.88 and the bias of 0.52 is something which uh, I thought uh, is, is good enough for, uh, for this. Uh, I wanted to subtract a bit more shapes to get more interesting uh, starting position. So I can repeat it uh, one more level of, of, um, uh, of minimum uh, purling noise. Uh, Similar amplitudes, element size 387 and 6, uh, 600 and, and, and 10. I offset it a little bit so it doesn't uh, match uh, exactly. Uh, again, both fold and complement are enabled in post processing, and you can adjust the, uh, the gain and bias to kind of see where this minimum is going to, to kick in. Uh, for my shapes, I uh, like 0 0.758 and 0 0.5571 uh, for bias is something which I thought looked uh, looked nice. Uh, then I wanted to add a little bit uh, uh, distortion variation to this shape because like this was very kind of kind of smooth. Uh, so the big shapes were done by actually first uh, distorting the entire uh, height field. It was done by curl noise at the amplitude of, of 19 and the roughness lower to 0 0.283. Uh, I just love Houdini how it kind of balls out the the, uh, the parameters which are uh, not uh, not default ones. So you can actually see what I changed in these uh, in these notes. After that, I remapped it a little bit just to kind of bring it up and maybe compress uh, the values. Uh, you can see the uh, the values here. You can, but you have to do it. Just kind of uh, level of tweak that I like to that I like to do. Uh, then, since I know I wanted to uh, erode it uh, heavily, uh, I downsampled it uh, actually to the half uh, resolution, going to 250 by 250 uh, voxels, and ran another uh, distort layer to break out the shapes even uh, even more. Uh, I thought it was still a bit, bit too, uh, too uniform. So another distort layer to kind of break out all those curves. Uh, I used the simplex noise at the amplitude of uh, 100 and element size of 250. That's basically everything that I change uh, for this. Okay, now comes the first erosion pass. Uh, the first erosion, as you can see, uh, I set up at the freeze frame of, of 20 uh, frames. Most of the things were left at, at, at default. I, of course, disabled the visualization and I also disabled adding the debris layer to the final uh, height layer because I don't want 
uh, the debris. I want to maintain my the sharpness of my rivers. I don't want that all that things slumping down and filling my uh, my crevices. Uh, and I also, uh, as usual, um, adjust the the post smooth. Uh, and I think. Uh, that's maybe uh, it. Oh, I, I completely removed the hydro uh, uh, erosion for this, and uh, I cranked up the uh, the thermal erosion to uh, to do. Uh, so by default uh, here the readability is set uh, to one for hydro. Uh, so I removed that because I only wanted like like heat level erosion since this is louder than that much uh, that much rain. Um, then on the second uh, branch, I uh, I wanted to kind of add a little bit the details uh, in the lava rivers themselves. So I used the mask by uh, feature to mask by height uh, and set like uh, the, computed the range and masked uh, uh, via map only the the lower parts uh, of the of the height field. And then I ran uh, a masked uh, erosion. You can see here I plugged it into both only on that part. So what I'm actually now getting is I'm I'm keeping those peaks uh, intact, but I'm only eroding this uh, the slopes and and the bottom part for that erosion. Uh, uh, what I did is that uh, here I kind of like have increased the erosion rate and uh, set the hydro readability to uh, two and removed the thermal readability because I wanted these uh, lines to kind of simulate the lava flowing uh, uh, down for uh, for this case. Um, you can see the the, the settings uh, here uh, in the advanced settings. Um, uh, I think that I didn't change anything here, but I also removed the uh, debris layer from the final height layer because again I didn't want to touch the, the sharpness uh, of those kind of lava rivers cutting into the uh, terrain. Uh, in the end, I wanted to blend in uh, this like heavily uh, thermal erosion, this heavily rain erosion. So I, I used the hard field uh, uh, layer to uh, on a blend method uh, at 0 0.8. So bending between uh, the thermal and the, the rain one at uh, 0 0.8. So I also get the, the thermal peaks and all those um, uh, kind of uh, uh, flowing lines going down to the, uh, to the river. Uh, so next was I wanted to uh, like adjust those rivers uh, a little bit more. I wanted to kind of add um, uh, way more variation uh, to them uh, as well. So first I, I needed to kind of press the uh, the height field. I multiplied the resolution by four, uh, going back to uh, one thousand uh, by one thousand uh, voxels. Then I uh, first masked by feature. Uh, I masked by uh, by height. Uh, only this uh, area of the map to mask only the uh, the lowest part of the of the rivers, um, and then I did a distort a mask distortion uh, because I plugged the mask feature both into the uh, distortion and in the mask to distort only that part of the river. So uh, settings for this node were I used the, the curl noise type uh, with a small amplitude but also with a small element size to get this. Uh, like uh, stones or, or kind of rocks sticking out, um, uh, as you can see. If I go, this, you can just set it up a little bit uh, how you how you like. Uh, I increased the number of octaves to ten, but I reduced the uh, the roughness uh, all the way down to zero point one because I only wanted to those those big chips uh, uh, for now. Then I did another mask by feature, a uh, very similar approach, uh, masking by height, but now uh, going even uh, lower uh, in those crevices to select even the lower part of the of the rivers. And I did another distort uh, on them as well, uh, this time with a smaller amplitude and smaller element size uh, to get like a second level of, of variation uh, on top. So this is like the first level and this is the second level that, uh, that I got. So uh, I started liking all these uh, uh, kind of stones poking out uh, between those rivers. So it was uh, I wanted to kind of uh, fix the river bank itself, uh, add even more details. So how I did that? Uh, first of all, I wanted to I clear the master so I can like uh, look at this a little bit uh, better. Um, I like those those stones, but I wanted to uh, kind of sculpt the actual river canyon a little bit uh, more. So I did uh, one trick, which I think is pretty cool, and like, which, I mean, it's good in you can do that. So what I did is 
Actually, I converted the, the height field itself to polygons uh, first using the convert height field uh, node. I kept the density at, uh, at one. So basically you get uh, a lot of polygons, uh, 1000 points. It's, uh, since it's thousand by thousand, you get 1 million uh, points when converting. As you can see, it's, uh, it's actually polygons uh, uh, now. Uh, after that, I use the mounting node, and um, I use the very specific settings for this uh, mounting no uh, node. Uh, height and element, uh, element scale was uh, left to one, uh, but I set the X and Z uh, uh, axis scale to zero and only use the Y. So I can only kind of I'm only uh, modulating the height in in one axis. You can see uh, like going from uh, uh, to get a little bit like uh, uh, some to get some form of a, of a uh, of a canyon and kind of overhanging rocks. I mean, this looks like cool and interesting uh, in itself, but it's not like I don't want this look for for my entire height field. Uh, so I need to kind of find a way to uh, blend it back uh, back in. Uh, it's not an ideal technique because you get some uh, back face protruding. Uh, when, run, when running the mounting node uh, this way, but uh, uh, there's a way to fix all of this. So first I run uh, uh, one, uh, one pass of, of smooth at a strength uh, of 10. It fixes things uh, a little bit uh, in some cases, but it's, it's only like halfway uh, done. After that, I, I use the lab's uh, thicken uh, just to give this poly, this like single-sided polygon, some uh, some thickness. I use the depth of of, uh, of ten, as you can see here. Uh, after this, the next step is converting it to uh, to uh, a VDB, uh, just so I can remove all these backside uh, issues that, that you can see. Uh, so I use the voxel size of two for this scale. Uh, be careful not to plug in on a default scale because like this height field is, is huge. Your computer is probably gonna gonna hang. So I'm using the distance uh, VDB, of course, at the voxel size of two, and then I'm converting it back to uh, to polygons uh, with zero is uh, ISO value. So, so I'm getting this. Uh, so as you can see, we kind of fixed all that uh, that back facing polygons uh, issue, and we're getting some quite nice uh, and interesting features here. But I'm only interested in the ones uh, which are kind of uh, focused in those uh, river banks, and I want to kind of blend them uh, back uh, back in. So luckily, if you remember, we can use the high field project node uh, to project all those details back in. Uh, definitely, use you you lose some of the details, even the cool ones, because high fields cannot support any uh, overhangs. Uh, but never never mind. I'm only curious in the one uh, the details actually in the in the river banks themselves. Uh, then I blended it in uh, with the original uh, height field, uh, which is all the way back here, as you can see this one. But first I needed to create a mask, uh, how I'm gonna blend it in. So I masked it by uh, by feature, again, uh, using the height, but uh, very, very sharp line, as you can see by the, by the ramp uh, uh, here, uh, only because I wanted to kind of control the blend with the blur and the mask blur uh, after the, uh, the fact, and going all the way back to the mask by uh, uh, by featuring and controlling the ramp, I wanted to control the, the phase through the, through the mask by blur. It, it was just more convenient. Then I had the high fill layer uh, set to blend and blend to uh, to one, uh, as you can see, and I just blend in uh, based on uh, this uh, this mask. Uh, I kind of wanted to increase the range of that height to to get this ridge uh, from the from the convert by VDB, as you can see here from the projected actually. Uh, because I kind of felt it looks uh, nice. It created that a little bit uh, uh, of a cliff where, where lava is going to uh, uh, to flow. So I kind of pretty much liked uh, how this uh, looked so far. So it was time for the final like detailed uh, erosion pass. So what I did, uh, I ran erosion at 20 frames, uh, pretty much at the default settings. Uh, uh, actually, I, I removed the thermal erosion because I only wanted the the kind of uh, the flow lines. Um, and uh, as far as I know, yes, I also can enable the post smooth on the on the debris. 
And uh, again, in layers, I disabled adding debris layer to the final height again because I didn't want to fill those uh, those rivers. Um, of course, like this is way too much uh, erosion, but I wanted to have a, like a bit faster ability to to tweak how how much of the erosion I I want. Uh, so again, I let it run at 20 frames, and after that, I use the height fill layer to blend the exact amount. Uh, that uh, that I want. Uh, right here I landed it at 0 0.15 percent uh, uh, back with my uh, uh, with my height field. As you can see, this is the uh, the clean one, the eroded the eroded one, and this is the blend one blended at at 15 percent. Uh, okay, so that was kind of uh, I was happy with the with the look. I knew that, that uh, most of it was to come from from the shaders. So I resampled it to the final resolution size uh, by axis and and 4K. Uh, that kind of added a little bit and sharpened some of the details and it smoothed the other uh, issues. Uh, I didn't want any slumping again, uh, but I did I did need the flow field for for texturing purposes. So I just created. Uh, I added a flow field node so I can get the flow field generated. Uh, for me, uh, I used the, the default settings and I just cleared the mask uh, in the end because I didn't need uh, the mask itself. You probably just dis like disable copy to mask uh, in the flow field settings. It will, it, will, it will do the same thing. I cached the file because that was the, the file uh, the variant I was happy that I wanted to uh, to texture and same as before uh, to prepare it for texturing uh, there was a quick shade which was actually made for uh, for previsioning the cop to net which we'll go through a little bit uh, later and I created the necessary masks that I want for the texturing uh, in in cops uh, first one is a mask by occlusion uh, same settings as before, minimum and maximum occlusion default 0 to 1. I just use occlusion ramp which linearly fades off from 1 to, uh, uh, to 0. Uh, and that's it. I copy that layer from mask to AO because I wanted to save it and use another mask by feature. Uh, this time it's mask by uh, curvature. Again, click on compute range to get the max curvature value. But set the ramp uh, to linearly ramp up from zero to one to get all the all the necessary uh, all the necessary uh, uh, values. Uh, and the last node was the visual noise uh, visualize height field node, uh, where I use compute range to get the final mean and maximum uh, uh, elevation values uh, which I'm going to need. And that was the that's it for the for the fiery uh, uh, height field.